the busy little streets of Fronteras, we were rushing to get our last-minute groceries, projects, and meetings with other sailors done before leaving the Rio Dulce. We just had a boat pull up alongside with a, a pot full of freshly squeezed and boiled milk. And I'm just bringing it back to a boil. I'm gonna add a little bit of lime juice. We're not gonna risk waiting to see what happens when it curdles because I'm not sure about what bacteria is floating around in this air, what kind of cheese it will make. And we'll just see how this one turns out. Add a little bit of lime juice to curdle it and we're gonna squeeze it through the cheesecloth and yeah, we'll see how much it makes. We wanted to get one last barbecue in with friends that we'd made where Seta's boat would be docked for now. And doom, we had to try the local breadfruit. Maybe it's really not nice. a, a ripe one. What's next? It's good. It is like a potato. <laughs> Sorry, Fatty. I film you filming. <laughs> <laughs> These leafcutter ants provided apt metaphorical imagery for the behaviors of humans here on the Sweet River. They were doing their best to cultivate with the materials at hand and build up their vessels. However, leafcutter ants use plant material to grow gardens of fungus, and their colonies are located underground. Amazingly, the colonies can grow to be larger than the length of some of these boats laying up here in the hard. Ogling, Ravi ogling at various boats in the in the hard here. I like this. You really like the wind, the... You think it's a hydrovane? Yes, yeah. it's a hydrovane for sure. Hydrovane through the hull, the, the hull of the boat. Just sticking through the hull of the boat, I we wandered around the several boatyards, chatting up some local cruisers engaged in the hard life. Or rather, life on the hard. This Frenchman warned us of a welder who had made some bad repairs on his aluminum hull outside of the ram boatyard. And now he would have to completely redo all the welds now that he had found someone better to do it inside a ram. We spoke to this gentleman, owning this motor sailor, who sat awestruck by the enormity of his project. And we chatted with the owner of Lucky Bitch. Yes, that was the vessel's name written on the hull, whose soft-spoken and modest owner explained to us the extent of her work on the steel-hulled van der Staat. If it's too hot uh, or too dirty in your boat, you can live in the casita, but that's expensive, eh? Twenty dollars per day or something. Ah, so, uh, so this was the water tank where you welded. Yeah, that will be the water tank again. But where was the problem? Stupid thing. They made a water tank, and the connection was not close to hundred percent good. So each time I fill the water yeah. from the deck, yeah. it was spilling a little uh, bit of water, but uh, not much. And then we call it a pool. When the yeah. water in a steel boat stays yeah. and doesn't go away, yeah. you create a pool. Yeah. It's corrosion. Yeah. Yeah. And so far it goes through the, the, to the hull under the water line. Yeah. Beautiful. Built in Cantiere Grigio, built in Italy in, in, a, in a pipe factory. Can make 13 meter pipe per meter and build 13 meter per meter. Inside the pipe and pick up the whole board and go. And a big project inside. <laughs> All the way across the river, there was another interesting project that was causing some sort of a ruckus online. With our guy Mark here adding a gigantic sugar scoop to the stern of his Endeavor 43. Well, I have a problem with uh, getting an idea and then not letting anything stop me. Like, I don't know if you, if you see my solar panels up yeah. on the Mizzen map. I've seen that, that before. Have you seen that before? Yes, I have seen that before, yes. Oh, okay, well good. I thought I was the innovator of it, but uh, they roasted me on the, on the sailing site for that. Amid the grinding and the heavy machinery moving back and forth through the Abel boatyard, he explained to us that the sugar scoop is meant to be a platform for his custom aluminum dinghy. The construction has gone through various revisions, with extra supports and now extra fiberglass and epoxy being added, as he seemed to face critique and criticism online. You know, even though I might not um, embrace your idea that you have for me right away, it still goes in my brain. And, and I don't want to shut anything out, so I listen to constructive criticism, I listen to all the input, and, uh, but you know, you have to also keep your guard up. You can't just go wandering around letting people influence you. You can't let everybody else's dream be your dream. Meanwhile, we had finalized plans to leave the real Dulce. Not by plane, which would have been a complicated matter with the dog, 
and not by bus, which would have been impossible with the dog, but instead we would have the opportunity to travel back home by boat. The only complication was the weather. Here, up the river, the weather was pleasant and calm most days. But we knew from weather reports on windy.com, windguru, passage weather, and all the like. I could possibly live here if it was a little bit more fishy. If there was more fish available. That winds were not favorable for sailing up north right now. Nice, huh? They hadn't been favorable for weeks, and they probably would not be for several more. Kevin's boat, an Alberg 37, which we had followed in through the river bar when we first arrived here in Guatemala, had now been repaired. Yes. In Choco, you guys get along well. Like most boats, including the ones we toured in the yards, there of course still remained projects here and there to tackle. Our day of departure came suddenly and unceremoniously, as the forecast presented a small 2.5 day window to sail past Belize and into the southern anchorages of Mexico. Goodbye, Seda! Goodbye, <laughs> Justin! <laughs> we packed the dinghy for yeah. everything, including the dog. And I will go with Craig. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> dinghy full of full of stuff is coming. Okay. Put it on, put it for I know. I know. <laughs> it's important to kiss people as they come aboard. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for the cuddles as I come aboard. We were given a farewell by Fati, who dropped off Robbie with a pile of mostly fishing gear. Thank you, Fati. Hopefully, oh, Craig comes back to my headline. I left my headline because Oh, no. And we were welcomed by Perla and Kevin aboard Promise. What's throttle? What's forward? This is throttle. That's it. Down, up. And that's the year. We did not have time for a long reception though. The anchor was hauled up right away, and we would begin our journey down the river to attempt to check out of the country this very day. We settled in as we were underway, crossing El Golfete and Robbie testing out the new galley environment. Mm -hmm. 